Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I do apologize in advance as I do sound a bit boxy. I'm currently away from my studio, so I don't have my mic, but I still wanted to get a video out for you guys. Please bear with me. Uh, I'm going to make this as clear uh, and as crisp as possible. So let's get right into it. So first things first, as I always talk about, you've got to get in a rough composition sketch. You can do it in black and white. You can do it in color. If you've already got a color in mind you want to use, by all means, go forth with that. Um, I went with uh, grayscale because I wasn't 100% sure on what color palette I wanted to use for this piece. So I'm just continuously working on my sketch right now, trying to build a composition. Um, a lot of things I'm adding in right now won't necessarily remain the same. Uh, so you shouldn't feel like you're locked into it. Just create some shapes in there, create some values, make some stuff, right? Just add in stuff that pops into your mind first. And then if, it should want, if you want to change it later, you can change it later. You know, don't let these things restrict you. Don't feel a sense of pressure. So now I've got a good idea of how the composition looks. It's really simple, there's you know, nothing really to it. Now we can start adding in some color. Uh, if you want to add a little bit more to your composition before you add color, that's okay too. Um, but for me, I was happy with where I was sitting with the sketch. So I proceeded. Um, essentially what you're doing is you're going back to the background layer. Initially we had it as just clear, clear gray. Uh, you can go in and choose two colors uh, that you want for your sky. In this case, I've chosen an orange and a brownish tone, but more on like a still on like that uh, orange, orange brown. And then that's two colors there. You can add in your third color, which in my case would be the yellows. I feel like this palette was what would suit this kind of uh, environment that I'm going for. Uh, and also the, the lighting scenario I'm trying to go for, I think it will really create that richness. Open up a new layer in between your objects and uh, color pick from like the lighter um, yellowy orange from the sun um, and just get a soft brush on low opacity and create some separation. So just create some mist and fog with your light, br uh, your soft brush. You can go ahead and start um, creating some more uh, details and definition, start defining what your objects are. Obviously, I'm trying to create some old structures here, maybe some from some old civilization. And to you know show that it's quite aged, you've got to make sure that it's you know essentially aged. So I'm going in and I'm just breaking up some of the edges, um, not trying to make it look too perfect. After that, here comes the fun part. You can go in uh, and start creating elements of storytelling into your main focal point. Uh, the structures in this case. Uh, I'm just adding in some maybe some symbols, some ancient civilization um, based symbols, uh, anything that could tell your story. Uh, this is a great time for you to add in maybe like a carvings, um, patterns, all that kind of, you know, along, along those lines. So now we're moving on to the next step. It's to basically rework the objects that you sketched in early on. Um, remember how I told you to just go loose during the early stage. Uh, now's the time um, to you know recreate them in a way where you have a better idea of what it might be. Obviously, now that I've created those, I've created those structures, those two pillars. I know that this is going to be quite a ruined kind of environment with lots of broken, you know, other broken structures to go around it. So I'm essentially just going in, re-blocking in more shapes, um, more refined shapes, so we know that you know it's some run-down ruins, some build, old buildings that's collapsed over time. So 
So this is a reminder and just a you know some a heads up. You know, being constantly aware of your light source. Where is your light coming from? I need you to constantly ask yourself uh, to remind yourself at all times throughout your whole piece. You know, where your light source is coming from. Where is it hitting? So we've made this quite simple. We've kept this right in the center. So essentially, it works like a you know like a ball. So everything surrounding it and touches you know every surface that sees that um, center line will be touched by the light. So that's going to be something I keep in mind all the time and I want you to as well and that way you'll you know, basically know where uh, where to apply light and where you can just keep as dark shadows. So going back to the sketch phase where I kept everything real simple um, throughout your piece, don't be afraid to add in additional um, elements like I'm adding in the trees here right now. Now I'm going in and adding in those little touch-ups and details throughout the whole piece. Now these little details um, you don't have to go too hard on. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go, you know, go over excessive with it, because most times out of ten, it probably won't actually affect your overall piece when someone's looking at it. If someone's going to go in and look at it just to look for the details, okay, they will see it. But um, for me, for example, I like to keep my focal point super detailed, and then everything around it is they're essentially just supporting elements. So I still spend time on it, but not a huge amount, just enough to get the idea across. So you can use your clouds to your advantage. What I mean by that is, if you've uh, heard me talk about the importance of leading the eye using your um, objects and using design, um, that's, that applies to the clouds here as well, especially the clouds here. So you can look at the, the direction of the clouds. They're all pointing towards the focal point. They're going towards the sun um, and they're also pointing towards my two main pillars. So using your clouds in a direction where it uh, draws your viewer's eyes to your focal point, that will really, really push the design of your composition a lot as well. So now we're up to the finishing touches. We're on the finishing stage. So once you've created that, your character, should you add one, you can start adding in the special effects. And what I love to do is just create some glows, create some lights. And this could be some glittering um, dust particles that might be shining through from the light coming through from the center. And then turning your layer mode on something um, that gives off a really strong light source in that that I love using color dodge. Be sparing with it uh, because it can overburn some of the colors that you've selected. So it's about finding a balance when you're using color dodge and knowing strategically where you're going to place your um, little elements here. With this one here, because it was quite dark, I ended up using a lot of brightness and contrast and exposure adjustment layers just to lighten it up a bit as an overall piece.
and that brings us to the end of this tutorial thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys found this really helpful and really useful you can keep up to date with my latest artwork updates and news on my instagram and if you want to see more of these tutorials you can find them on my patreon i also have on there open layered photoshop files photoshop brushes high quality wallpapers for you to download and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and i look forward to seeing you next time